Hey everybody, Joe Latenda here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of vinyl so you can make that floor flat, so you can continue your plank installation throughout areas like kitchens, bathrooms, wherever you might have some vinyl in a quarter inch subfloor. Now, if you were, if you have a vinyl that's on top of a concrete slab and you are looking how to remove that, now I will tell you right now that I have a video that will show you how to float that. You don't have to always get rid of vinyl when it's super thin a 16th of an inch even you could float that out and i'll put a link right up here on that video that shows you how to prep your floor to be able to avoid ripping out that vinyl now if you have more questions you can certainly ask me in the comments anyway this video is going to show you how to demo a vinyl floor and a quarter inch underlayment so here let's watch Okay, so we have a situation here where we need to remove this vinyl and the quarter inch subfloor that's underneath it. Now some of this runs around the cabinets and some of it the cabinets are on top of. Like this cabinet right here, they have the cabinet built right on top of the subfloor. So what we need to do first is we need to cut that away so that we can pull this subfloor underneath out. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to plunge in to the floor around this cabinet so that we get a nice clean cut and then this quarter inch subfloor under here is going to release from the floor and, and from around the cabinet. Now there are some adjustments on these so that when you get into situations where you need to go under like this toe kick here, you can just turn your blade like this. You can feel it when you cut through that vinyl and then through the subfloor, you can usually feel it give and then it hits the next subfloor. If you don't feel that, you just want to know that this is only a quarter inch thick. You don't want to be sending this blade down the floor into the floor a half inch because now you're cutting into your other subfloor. So after you do this for a little bit, you kind of get the hang of it and know what I'm saying. And if you have to go back and do some recutting when you are actually pulling the floor up around the cabinet, because you didn't go all the way through, then that's what you'll have to do. But just keep in mind, you don't want to cut through the actual subfloor. You're only trying to go through the underlayment. Okay, so what I was using there, cutting that cabinet, was a bimetal blade. I'm not sure if you can get a good view of that or not. But anyway, a bimetal blade is good to use for cutting things that you know might have a nail, a staple, whether it's steel or aluminum works really good so i use these bimetal blades a lot now they cut a little bit slower than a normal wood blade but they're worth it so that you when you hit something you're not burning the blade out right away now this is something that whoops something that i get on amazon now i buy these i get a 20 pack of these blades for 26 to 30 bucks somewhere in there i'll leave a link below if you want to check these out these are really good blades i've been using them for about five years now i'm saving tons of money by doing it, by using these instead of going and getting the $30 blade from the big box store, which is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know about these. So if you do want to check these out, I'll leave a link below. And if you decide to use that link, I really appreciate it. Okay, so the next step is, is now we're gonna try to start pulling up all this underlayment. Now the key to this is, is you want to cut this into sections to make it easier for you to be able to pry it up and get those sections out. So I just like to use a circular saw. And now this does get dusty, so if you have bedroom doors that you want to shut, anything you want to tape off, knickknacks you want to cover, TVs, just use some painter's plastic and cover those things up. Open some windows if you can. Um, because this will get dusty. Now we're going to use a vacuum with this, but it's still going to have dust. And so now what my goal is, is to set the saw at the thickness of this vinyl and this underlayment with just being able to just cut through that and maybe skim the subfloor. And so how I like to do that is I'll just take my saw, we'll set it up, and you can see 
my plate over here is not flat yet. So I'm trying to get that flat. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna adjust it now. Get my plate nice and flat. And then I drop the blade and now I'll lock it. And so now if I cut into this floor, show you an example here before we go too far because you can do a test here like what I'm doing to make sure that you're not getting too far and you can see that I'm skimming the subfloor a little bit which isn't bad but maybe I don't want to go quite that deep into the subfloor so I'll adjust it a little bit more and so you can see this vinyl has lines in it I'm just going to cut sections right along these lines. And so I'll probably take my first cut right in here. I'll go all the way to the wall as far as I can. And then I'll come over here and I'll do another three foot section. And then another. And then I'll come and do it in three foot sections this way or even four and follow these lines. I'm not going to get all the way to the wall with this, and I'd finish that with my oscillating saw. Sweep real quick before you saw again. And then either push that off to the side or vacuum it. And that's going to help you control some more of that dust. Okay, again, just trying to get rid of some of the sawdust before it's everywhere. All right. Now I like to use a pry bar that's a little bit longer so you can get farther in. Get your pry bar in right there, and then you can start lifting. Now right there was a the seam. So you can see what I mean by the vinyls kind of makes it a pain because the seam is there but then the vinyl is holding it so that's why I like to make cuts but if you can hit those spots where those seams are which they're going to be in different spots everywhere so you really don't know where they're at it makes it a little bit easier to find them but that's it that's how you do it now if you come here and look you can see that we're going to have a million staples that we're going to have to take care of. Uh, what I like to do is, I, it, like I said earlier, you can pound these down. If you're going to be covering them up with a pad or some kind of tar paper or something, then it won't squeak with the other floor. So obviously, you can just pound them down. You can also use a bimetal blade on an oscillating saw. That takes a lot longer. Or you can use a pliers. And the way I like to do it if I'm using the pliers is I'll just grab it, hold tight, and, and rock back. And you can see how that works then. Just go right back with it. Um, if you try to pry something in between there, a lot of times you can get them out, but sometimes you just snap it then right in the middle. It'll break and then you'll have two legs to try to pry out with the screwdriver. Now this floor is releasing staples really easily, so I guess there's a fourth way you can do it. You can try it like this, but if you start snapping these in the middle, then don't do it that way because you're just going to end up having to ply out two legs then instead of just two together. So what we did is we took the saw and we cut around the cabinet. You can see 
how we went right in front of it about four inches and the reason why is because when you're tearing this out if you try to go all the way to the cabinet you can start doing damage under there and it makes it a little more difficult to tear out because of this um, toe kick so it's easier to cut right in front of it and then you come back after you rip this out so this one this we've been very blessed this under limit's coming up pretty easy some of you might have a little tougher of a time and we're even keeping some of the staples they're popping out so we don't have quite as many in the floor as normal but you can see a lot of them stayed in too but just letting you know we have been blessed with this one but so now we just want to come right in front of the cabinet start trying that this and then I just pull it so now if it was slid under the cabinet like this was you're not going to damage anything you're just going to pull it right out skimmed it I barely went into the floor but you do want to try to just skim it um, even if you don't leave a mark at all and just get through the underlayment that would be the perfect scenario but a lot of times just skimming it barely is the way that I like to, to do it to make sure we get it all the way cut through. okay so you can see that really to do something like this just takes a little bit of elbow grease and a few tips here and there you'll be able to handle this pretty easily I think it just takes a little bit of time it's going to be well worth you tearing these floors out instead of trying to either put a transition there or somehow float that that's a little too high to be floating anyway I want to pray for you and your family I pray that God blesses you showers you with his never-ending grace I pray that your projects go well that they're problem free and that you're not having stress because of these projects that you're working on trying to get them done juggling work things like that and i pray for these things in jesus name hey i'm joel attender if i have earned your like please hit the like button for me guys hit that subscribe button i'm getting so close to that hundred thousand mark i'd really like to reach it that reach that goal and i have lots of other videos that will sh that i show how to install vinyl planks so go check those out check my channel out hey i'm joel attender have a great day.